All right, all right, all right, all right. Welcome back to episode five. My name's Scott, also known as Supercoach Reaper. And in today's video, I'll be bringing you a player comparison between Josh Kelly from the GWS Giants and Zach Merritt from the Essendon Bombers. Now, if we go through the pros of Josh Kelly, we'll start off with that he has a higher ceiling. So Kelly can pop out multiple 140 plus scores in a season and even has the potential to score as high as 200. So if we go through a couple of his large scores throughout the past few years, we see that in 2020, he had a few big scores of 139 in round 13 and 138 in round 17, along with a season high of 195 in round eight. And then if we go back two years to 2018, where he averaged 114, he had scores of 146, 149, 130, 130 again, and then topped out at 205 or 41 possessions against Carlton in round 20. So he does have a massive ceiling. Whereas Merritt really tops out at about 140 and is more likely to score between that 120 to 100 130 range. 2020 was his best year yet, so he had some scores of 137, 143 in round 13, followed that up with 145, 125, and 122, with his highest being back in round two against Sydney when he scored 159 or 29 touches. But if we go through the past few seasons, for instance, back in 2019, he has scores of 113, 116, 104, 109, 120, 104 again, 121 again, and then a couple 108s, 120, and top down. 155 so he doesn't really score over 140 consistently and if he does it's only a couple of times throughout the year Pro number two for selecting Josh Kelly over Merritt is his price. So he comes in at 615,600 compared to Merritt 620,900. It's a very minimal difference of only 5k but every dollar counts in Supercoach where that money could be spent elsewhere. Pro number three for selecting Kelly is he's only had one score below 80 in four seasons. Now that's a pretty big start when you look at it. He has missed games due to injury, so we have to take that into account as well. But he also has 44 out of 64 scores over 100 since 2017, which is a strike rate of 70%. It's pretty good considering his low scores are around the mid 80s to low 90s. He is very consistent in reaching the ton. Where if we look at Merritt, he's had 30 out of 60 scores over 100 in the past three years, which is only a 50% strike rate so that's a fair drop off from Kelly and with Merritt as well he's more likely to score sub 80 where like I said Kelly is more likely to score around 85 for his low games so if we look at a couple of Merritt's low scores over the past few years we can see last year he had two consecutive weeks of 78 and 68 and that was probably it for 2020 which was his best year but if we go back to 2019 and 2018 he's had scores 53 in round 3 in 2018 72 a 79 and then an 89 that was a pretty good year but he just didn't score large enough to boost his average so he finished the year with an average of 100 that does include a 17 in round one however and in 2019 he's had scores of a 67 a 59 a 78 an 81 and an 88 and an 85 he does drop a lower score more often than Kelly which is something that we should keep an eye on as well pro number four for selecting Kelly is that he looks like he's back to full fitness he recently won the 2k time trial at the GOS Giants a few weeks back so that indicates that he's back in full flight and a full flight Josh Kelly is one of the best players in the competition. He's such a damaging player by foot. He wins a lot of the ball and he hits the scoreboard. If he's fully fit round one, he must be considered, but due to his previous injury history, it's hard whether or not I'll go down that route. Now the pros for selecting Merritt over Kelly comes down to basically one thing, and that's durability. He's far less likely to get injured compared to Kelly, and this is one of the biggest deciding factors for me. I tend to lean towards players, especially premium midfielders, that will most likely play 22 games rather than 15. So let's say, for instance, Merritt can average 113 and play 21 or 22 games, where Kelly can average 119 and only play 15. I'll always lean towards Merritt in this instance because total points is what matters at the end of the season. Because once you get that injury, you either have to trade him or you get the rookie score from your bench. So total points is what we should be looking at here, not the super coach average. So Kelly's only played 42 games in the past three seasons compared to Merritt 60. So Merritt only missed one game in 2020. He played every game in 2018 and 2019, missed one in 2017, and played every game in 2016. Where if we look at Kelly, he missed three games last year, then he missed eight in 2019, seven in 2018, and one in 2017. So he didn't make the park often enough for me. Another good reason for selecting Merritt is he had a very strong back end of 2020. So Merritt averaged a whopping 124 points in the final nine rounds of the season and finished the year with his highest yearly average 
average of 115. We can also see that in the final six rounds, he had four scores over 120 plus, and that's something that we can look forward to seeing more of in 2021. He is also a free agent at the end of the 2021 season, and he's only 25 years of age, so if I was him, I'd be wanting to have my best season yet. Pro number three is, now this isn't a massive factor at all, but it was weird that he was left out of the leadership group in 2020 and now he makes a reappearance in 2021. So it shows that his peers and his coaching staff have full confidence in his leadership abilities. And let's just hope that just translates to on-field performance. Pro number four, he doesn't have many challenges for points at the Bombers compared to Kelly at the Giants. The Giants have players such as Coniglio, Taranto, Hopper, Whitfield, Haynes and Ward, where at the Bombers they've really only got Dylan Shield, Andy Graham, and maybe Devin Smith and Darcy Parrish. So I see Merritt being the number one ball winner at the Bombers yet again this year. And usually when you find a lot of the pill, you tend to score a lot better. So less competition around Merritt gives him that leading edge over Kelly. And now for the verdict. It has to be Zach Merritt here. Kelly is too much of risk due to his previous injury history. And after witnessing Merritt's stellar performance in 2020, and especially in the later half of the season, I have full confidence that he can replicate what he did in 2020. And what also is a deciding factor here is I think Merritt will average similar to Kelly anyway so even if Kelly averages three to four points more Merritt will play six more games than Kelly and in the end like I said before total points is what is important here and what we should be focusing on more so that's my number one tip for you viewers out there look at total points and durability compared to the players super coach average over a year and then you'll get better results Thanks for watching. This has been episode five of the player comparison between Josh Kelly and Zach Merritt. And don't forget to like and subscribe. And as always, we'll see you in the next video. Cheers.